Hello everyone, my name is Matt Scorpion and welcome back to another week in Destiny for the reset specifically. And I will say we are getting closer and closer to Witch Queen. We'll be hearing more and more news. So if anyone is actually excited to hear about what might be coming, I'd recommend keeping your eyes peeled for any of my new videos regarding the TWABs or any other updates coming and just in general, any other hot fixes like that. Now, starting with our reset, we do have a boost this week, but I'll get in, into that when I get to it. For our rotations in Crucible, it is Team Scorched right now. And this is one of the seasonal objectives. I feel like this is going to be the last week of Team Scorch that's ever coming around this season. It could possibly be one more. It's hard to say. I don't know how many modes actually rotate in and out, but this could be the last one. So if anyone is keen on finishing all the seasonal challenges, I'd recommend they finish this one if they haven't already. It's basically just killing with Scorch Cannons. Now, into the Vanguard playlist, we have for the Grandmaster the Devil's Lair, which is Sepix, a fallen Nightfall. And if you manage to complete a Grandmaster or just normal variety, you can get the Azume Sniper Adept or the Plug 1 Fusion Rifle Adept. Both good options if anyone wishes to find them. Now, for the Grandmaster itself, you do have Arachno, Fallen Vandals spawning web mines at their feet, Barrier Champions in the form of Servitors, and Overload Champions in the form of Fallen Knights. No, that's wrong, Fallen Captains, as well as Chaff, Grandmaster Modifiers of Match Game, Equipment Lock, Extinguish, Limited Revives, Mob Champions, and Sepix Gaze for boosted arc and splash damage incoming. Now, going into the other thing, there is actually something to talk about for Gambit. There is boosted infamy right now, so if anyone wants to make the grind of grinding out infamy ranks quick, now would be the week to do it. Just because of the fact that there are some time-limited challenges that do require you to just basically rank up Gambit. It makes it a lot easier to do when there's double wrap, meaning you only have to do half as many matches. Now, into the Legend, I completely blanked on this the original time I went through this, but on the Master Mode, it is out of its way challenge. It is Master Templar challenge. If you wish to get a Time Lost Traitbringer, the time is now, because that is what's currently dropping from Master Vault of Glass challenge mode. And as well for Master Vault of Glass, it is discipline-focused armor for the reward, so if anyone is interested in making a grenade build that depends upon discipline, now's the time to farm this out. No. Going into the rest of the world for Europa, we have the Safeguard Simulation, as well as the Cadmus Ridge Eclipse Zone and Technocrat Empire Hunt. And for the Deepstone Crypt Challenge, it is of all trades, which is basically Nuclear Descent Challenge, where everyone has to pass the buff around and everyone has to do the job at least once. There's not That's one of the most confusing ones, but it, you can still do it in the same amount of time that it is given. Uh, as well, for the other challenge mode, it is a Leftovers Challenge in the Garden of Salvation Raid on the Moon. Now, going into the roles... Oh, wait, forgot one more thing. I can't believe I missed this. Now, for Dares of Eternity, for our rotations for the Legend mode, if those are willing to still complete Vidmaster. It is Vex and Hive for the first and second rounds. I got those backwards. Hive for the first one, Vex for the second. Doesn't really matter as long as you finish them, as well as Ballista Arc for the final round. So if anyone wishes to farm out these for the boosted rep that's uh, supposedly dropping from Legendary, as well as just finishing Bidmaster for the Triumphs, it is available now. Now, going into the roles, I'm just going to st straight up say there's only one role that I think is worth visiting Ada, and it's because it's a 57 roll. Don't know what it is specifically, but I think it's on Titan. But checking Banshee's weaponry, we have Night Watch, Threat Detector, Alloy Mag, or Flared Magwell, which in the end I believe is the same exact perks which corkscrew rifling and polygonal rifling. It's not the best night watch you can get, but it is definitely a good option if you wish to just get a lightweight scout that is pretty solid in PvE and PvP. Now, sidearm as well, alloy mag, ricochet rounds on a rapid hit multi-kill clip sidearm with arrowhead break and corkscrew rifling, range or stability. Actually, no, that's not even stability. I'd say that it's just handling. It, it's hard to say just because it says range and stability, but only slight and then this one says greatly controls recoil It's hard to officially say but a range masterwork as well making this a solid option for sidearms if you like sidearms I kind of still hate them now the Ikelos SMG a dynamic sway surrounded roll pretty solid there with its perks as well as a pennage mag for just straight up more mag size and more alloy mag and for the barrel options extended barrel for more range uh, a bit of recoil control as well as hammer forge rifling for just straight up more range it basically just restores the handling that's lost because of extended barrel at that point. It has the same range buff and, I believe, same stability buff. And moving into the 7th Seraph sidearm, we have Autoloading Surrounded, another good roll with very similar appendage mag and alloy mag again, with extended barrel and small bore. Basically, more range and stability control. Well, actually, more stability and range, and then a little bit more range. 
So, going into the heavies, we have a memory interdict. This one's not half bad. Hide explosive ordnance, surplus, chain reaction is always good. Since it is adaptive, it's one of the few grenade launchers that it still works in the heavy ground, as well as not the greatest other perks elsewhere, but it could be one to use if you need a grenade launcher that has chain reaction. Now, into the heavy slot, it is once again the class specific swords. Now, I'm confused about something because I looked at this on light.gg. All three of these swords are rated S tier plus, even though these are not some of the greatest perks I've seen. Heavy Guard is guaranteed on Crown Splitter, so it's hard to say. But as well, Thresh is pretty not great, and Whirlwind Blade is not that bad, but at the same time, Crown Splitter being slow makes Whirlwind not the greatest. Now, all three of them do have Jagged Edge, so it's hard to really say. Um, all three of these swords are S tier on light.gg, but I mean, it's your own. Uh, it's your own opinions whether or not they're good or worth it. My God Rolled Night Watches that I've been using forever that I just keep in the vault for a good little times, those are rated F minuses in terms of roll grading, even though they're my favorite things and they are definitely invasion tool to be feared. Now, that being said, that is everything in throughout the world that is rotated and out. We are still waiting on new twabs and new news. We're picking them up and going over them as they are covered, but aside from that, that is everything new to do with the reset. My name is Matt Scorpion, and I will see you in the next.